for joining us for another episode of Olsen 1M. I'm Florence John Duo. In this episode, we bring you the fishing potential of Papua New Guinea. We place the spotlight on the National Fisheries College in New Island Province, featuring the Nago Island Research Facility and some of the research work carried out on the island. Papua New Guinea's fisheries potential is yet to be fully realized. Having a rich and large exclusive economic zone of 2.4 million square kilometers is said to be the most productive and largest in the South Pacific. PNG's fisheries sector ranges from inland river fisheries, aquaculture, coastal beach gemma and reef fisheries, prawn troll and large-scale deep water tuna fisheries. The fisheries sector is a huge economic opportunity for PNG. However, with this huge opportunity comes challenges in terms of monitoring and controlling the fisheries resources. The country is, however, privileged to have a national fisheries college, which provides skills training to meet the needs of the country in the fisheries sector. This year is actually the 40th anniversary of the National Fisheries College. And way back in the old days, it was a training uh, facility for the Japanese who had uh, a pole and line fishery based out of Kaviang Lagoon with about 30 to 40 uh, vessels catching skipjack and supplying uh, th those tuna to a Katsubushi processing factory at um, Nago Island which has now been developed into the Nago Island Maori Culture and Research Facility. After the Japanese left, Fisheries College was um, uh, providing a, a certificate in tropical fisheries ecology and you will find that most of your provincial fisheries officers of a certain age group plus uh, uh, some members of the Department of Environment and other NGOs uh, went through that, that program. In the late 1990s as part of a uh, AUSAID uh, restructuring program which saw the National Fisheries Authority come into its own being as a separate statutory authority. There was also the Aussie Institutional Strengthening Program, which uh, changed the college into what it is today, a competency-based, skills-focused uh, training college. The institution aims to be proactive in fishery skills training, not only for big fishing cooperatives, but also impasse skills to locals at the community level as well as meet what is required in the fisheries sector. One of the main things was uh, the support to the vocational training centres and other uh, technical vo vocational education training institutions. And so we've devolved some of our lower level courses to those institutions. It means we get broader coverage right across the country. And previously we were targeting the maritime provinces with uh, uh, the fishing component of uh, the Commercial Fishing Operations Certificate 1, uh, seafood handling and hygiene, and then uh, now also aquaculture. The National Fisheries College also facilitates research, which sees participants come from other Pacific Island countries. So recently we had um, people, uh, researchers, scientists, from the Bishop Museum in Hawaii and the University of Guam and other organizations from the US territories in the Northern Pacific come here with students from uh, UNRE, UPNG and from the local uh, based NGO WCS, Wildlife Conservation Society, which are actually based in New York but they have a program here. And they went through a program where they 
uh, they got fish and they cut them open, measured them and uh, determined the size of sexual maturity. And that's very important if we want to start managing reef fisheries because if you don't know the size limits of when those fish reach sexual maturity, you don't know. So like if, you ha if you're running a creel survey, for example, and you're, you're seeing the villages are catching heaps and heaps of this one species, but then you measure them and then you say, oh, all these are undersized of sexual maturity, you know that you've got a problem with that fishery potentially in the future because there's no, those fish haven't spawned and there's no uh, next generation things. So that research is, is I think, is, is valuable and um, there's huge potential to do that. You know, you just need to pick, say, 50 well-known species that uh, villagers harvest across Papua New Guinea, work on those species, get the size of sexual maturity, and then you can start helping them develop their own management strategies for their own fisheries. We continue after the break highlighting some of the courses offered by the National Fisheries College in New Island Province. National Fisheries College or NFC in New Island Province provides a number of certificate courses to either upskill or teach people the skills needed in the fishing sector. They give us an insight to the courses they have available at the college. As you know, National Fisheries College is a business unit of the National Fisheries Authority and uh, our main uh, aim here is to train the personnel for the fishing industry. So I look after the commercial fishing operations department. This is the uh, department that trains the uh, students that uh, or seamen that go on board the fishing vessels, okay, like uh, Frabel, RD, and uh, Tatidu United Seafoods, all the fishing uh, vessels around the country. Okay, in this program we we run about uh, three three trainings. The first one is Certificate One, CFO One, Certificate One in Commercial Fishing Operations. And uh, that runs for five weeks, okay? And that is for new, new uh, trainees who want to go and work on board uh, fishing vessels. They come for this training, okay? The fishing industry sends these uh, trainees in, and uh, but recently we have also made uh, an uh, MOU with the, we have an MOU with the education department, so we also get intakes coming through the vocational training centers. So. They come for this training, uh, after five weeks they go back, uh, we send them back to do uh, 18 months at sea. Okay? After doing 18 months at sea, then they come back for Certificate 2 in Commercial Fishing Operations. When they come for Certificate 2, we have two streams, they either go to train to become deck officers or engineers on board. We are also registered under National Training Council. so. That means that uh, whatever certificates that we issue here is recognized in the country. Yeah? Okay, and uh, with that we also have, uh, according to the MOU with Education Depart uh, Department, we also go out and help uh, the vocational training centers. Okay, we have, and I think in East New Britain we have Wulna, we have uh, uh, Hawaiian in WIWEC, we have uh, in Morobe, Finshapen, and also Karkar in, in Medang. So, in our trainings, we want to spread the training right across. Uh, across uh, we believe that uh, if we can, you know, hand it down to the vocational training centers, we can train more of our young people to come through this program. Uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to put more workers on board the vessel, because currently uh, most of the jobs are occupied by, you know, uh, a foreign crew at the moment. So our aim is to make sure that we put more PNG crew on board the vessel. Students who go through trainings at the college have hands-on training on nautical training, engineering, deckhand and lifeboat trainings to name a few. Upon graduating, they are considered skilled and experienced to join fishing vessels and can be competent in the fishing industry in what they do, both on domestic and international vessels. Safety is a key aspect. Uh, before going out to sea, 
uh, all observers must know how uh, have go through survival training, uh, survival training, firefight, uh, firefighting training, and uh, what we call uh, personal social responsibility. So they know how to work with uh, you know different crew on board because the vessel will have nas different nationalities. So we want to make sure that they are able to you know have those skills before they go on board. Another area of training is aquaculture. Aquaculture was introduced in the 1950s as a means to alleviate high malnutrition levels in inland areas. However, aquaculture development has been stagnant until recent years with over 10,000 farmers throughout inland areas with a total combined production estimated to be valued at 10 million kina, according to NFA. The aquaculture thing was starting to roll out through the vocational training centers throughout the Highlands region and I think those things have been successful. It's the first time that that course has been run. So in different programs, we're now upscaling the uh, courses to show the uh, industry players, which as we all know are uh, mainly dominated by Filipino and, and Thai uh, companies, that there is the ability for Papua New Guineans to rise up within the ranks to become into middle management or to have bigger, better positions on, on, on fishing vessels. Another aspect the college focuses on is the fisheries business sector. Trainings in this sector aims to equip people in the fishing business with the knowledge needed to run a successful business. This training gives economic independence to people. I do training for these people to help them to understand the skills and knowledge or to acquire skills and knowledge for the simple bookkeeping, basic bookkeeping and all this. Because most people, they do fishing. They make a lot of money with fishing, but they have a lot more expense than income. And therefore, I go down to assist them with bookkeeping, business training, managing a book. And I go down to small level communities, families, individuals, fishing cooperatives. Those are established fisheries business back in the community. I deal with people who are semi-skilled from grade six, grade four, grade five who are engaged in fishing business. And when I go down to do training, I have to ensure that the level of communication between me and these people have to be understood. The language I use has to be simplified. Throughout Papua New Guinea, people are involved in fishing business. However, business skills is is lacking. People don't know how. They make a lot of money. They make two grand a day, three grand a day. And within a day, they spend 1,500 and they come home with 500 kina for the family. And what's left? There has to be budgeting. That's where I come in to train simple fishing businessmen and women to do little budgeting. The Fisheries College, being the only institution in the country, aims to continue on delivering at a high standard. The industry still needs more graduates for the higher, higher level, uh, like uh, maybe the oilers, second engineers, or the chief officers. So that's why we are bringing the standard of this college higher, so that we can meet that, that demand. When we return after the short messages, we take you for a tour through the Nago Island Research Facility to see some of the work they carry out on the island. The Nago Island Research Facility in New Island Province carries out research on ornamentals which is basically the baseline for the aquarium trade. Another research done there is on sea cucumbers, the culturing of sandfish species and also grow out purposes in communities as a restocking program. This facility has served as a research station for both researchers from Pacific and especially the Australian region. So we had researchers from JCU come here to do their studies, to collect data. Recently, we 
had um, an exchange program for sand fish research. This is to refine the techniques we use and to exchange ideas with our fellow Pacific Island countries who also do the same culture research. A couple of species, giant clam is one of them, seahorse, which is a recent research which I've started, and coral, as you can see behind me, we have the coral frags for growing coral on the reefs artificially, and the ornamentals, fish, which everyone knows as Nemo, the clownfish. Sandfish is one of the high value species in the beach dimmer fishery. Well, beach dimmer is when it is dried, it's the name of a dried, it's what it, the dried products are called. Sandfish is a species which has its habitat close to the coastal communities because it dwells in the shallower waters, it can be easily harvested. Therefore, it has been depleted in order for us to do stock enhancement to improve the stock in the wild we have to culture bring in the brood, brood stock and do our culture techniques to produce small juveniles which we release into selected sea ranching sites for grow out these are the culture things for the standfish larvae so in this thing we have almost 3 million eggs of sandfish which were spawned here artificially and they will be captured in this tank until they are almost 3 mil and they will be taken to nursery grow outs. The system of seawater which comes in, we put our sandfish bootstock, we also use it as a juvenile grow out stage in Hakonets which are suspended on the lines above the pond. In addition to the sea cucumbers that are produced on site at the National Fisheries Authority Research Center, we also work on giant clams. Giant clams are an important food item for many coastal communities, but unfortunately their populations are severely depleted in the wild. Here at the Mariculture Research Center, we work on producing these clams and handing them over to local communities for them to on grow for subsistence use. Where attractive clams present, those with bright blue and bright colors, it's also available to sell these for the aquarium trade to bring income into remote communities. Guineans for the first time graduated with Certificate 3 in Aquaculture and Certificate 4 as Fisheries Operations Officers. More on this when we return. National Fisheries College in New Island Province recently saw graduates pioneering in Aquaculture Certificate 3 and Fisheries Office Operation Certificate 4. On these occasions, we are witnessing the graduations of Certificate 4 in Fisheries uh, Officers Operations that basically contain the enforcement and compliance. Certificate 4 in Fisheries Operations that include uh, general fishing operations. And Certificate in Agriculture is one of those things growing in the present period. 
and we are glad for the first time we are able to actually train fisheries officers to be able to help us in terms of developing our culture in PNG. It's pretty hard in terms of trying to transform how we domesticate animals, the pigs, the couples, and what are chickens. The fish is never our tradition. It is the first thing that we try to introduce to address the shortfall in terms of protein supply, cash flow. We try to actually instill some basic training first and eventually we go in deeper to be more specialized into trying to go up the scale and to produce something that you can sell on the side of the road. And if it's good enough, we can do the export. In order for people to perform their duties in their field of work, they have to be trained to undertake their roles competently and effectively. Some graduates who spoke to Olsen Wanem said these skills and training they have acquired is a bonus. This, this training will give me confidence that I can also do compliance here in the province and enforce the fisheries Act, which is which is the tool now I have learned here in this course to enforce or carry out fisheries law within the province. Um, agriculture is and agriculture is similar. It's just that agriculture is farming livestock and crops on land, whereas in agriculture it's um, mainly deals with farming of organic uh, cultural culture organisms like fish, smallers, uh, crustaceans in water. So what I learned is um, I think it's very important for my province. Um, I think my province has already come to a level where they are trying to get into commercial production of uh, fish now and also producing their own feed. But uh, what I am actually learning here is it will help those who are interested and in trying to get into aquaculture and like newcomers going into the aquaculture, taking it as a um, activity and also, also as a business part of it. So I am privileged to attend this um, training and it's also like helps me to cut the cost of uh, running training in my province as well. Like because I'm an agriculture graduate, I have to take um, some people who are experienced in fisheries and aquaculture to actually run the the training for my farmers. But since having gained this um, knowledge and understanding of aquaculture, I think I'll be in a better position to run the training myself and cast, cut out all the costs involved in um, running the training and extension as well. So pretty much I'm involved in extension and training in Simbu, and I cover all the six districts. The college has been proactive for years in upskilling Papua New Guineans in various aspects of the fishing industry. It continues to strive for excellence to meet the country's requirements in the fishing sector. So we're trying to build up again, uh, you know, we want to be a center of excellence. We want to be something that is good for Papua New Guinea and, um, and an example of what can be uh, achieved here. So the library, you know, the concept is for, uh, yes, for student use, but we're uh, we'll be looking into the future as a, as a public resource centre for the local community, particularly high school students coming to do uh, research. And the computer lab is for our own uh, program. Some courses don't require you know, that sort of technological uh, component, but some of the others, uh, as the courses improve, will require a greater academic uh, input and also production of reports and assignments and such. The college future plans are in place and they are determined to see these plans happen for the college and for the betterment of Papua New Guinea's fishing industry. Yeah, I think the most important one, I guess, would be to get the uh, rest of the courses uh, up and running and accredited by NTC. Uh, a couple of them are still in uh, process of being uh, finalised, so that will be uh, the main program for that uh, academic course level wise. Um, having the new processing plant uh, completed will be a major boost uh, for the college. 
to have our waterfront facility uh, finalized and operation. Uh, so we have a whole waterfront complex where the, uh, the fisheries training vessels are and at the moment we're also holding on to one of the illegal Vietnamese blue boats uh, to have our engineering course room uh, completed and the new renovations by uh, the Japanese uh, over OFCF uh, would be another great thing to do. Basically, in general, we want to have everything completed so then we can just run with, with, with training and, um, and research for uh, Nago, but also thing. one of the things that I'd like to see under the corporate restructure is that the college establishes an applied fisheries research arm and that gives opportunity for people to come here to do stuff on um, things and, and there's different opportunities for that as well. If you have any comments or stories you would like to share with us, please send us an email via the address showing on your screen or visit our All Someone and Facebook page. That's all we have for this week. Thank you for watching and join us same time next week as we place the spotlight on leprosy in Papua New Guinea. Until then, I'm Florence John Duo. Thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening. <laughs>